Thanks for the privilege, Kenton. And I don't use that word lightly. I really do sincerely mean privilege. Brent, you did such a good job of uh, explaining to us Al Kober from the workplace. And I can't thank you enough. And uh, I would be quick to say that the consistency in his life between how he lived with his family, how he worked, and where he worked, and what he did at work, and then the Al Kober we saw here at church is incredible. Only one man, the same, same man, with the same gifts, the same talents. He was just an awesome guy. Al loved the ABF, prime time. It's three classes. He taught all three of them at, on a rotating schedule that functioned as one large class. He had the ability to, um, you knew immediately, Al had a presence. You knew that you were in the presence of a man who did have integrity and all of those things that you talked about. Yet he was a humble man. Al was a theologian. I mean, he was not just a Bible student. Al really had a grasp of the Word of God. And if I had a theological question, Al would be one of the first people that I would go to to talk with him about it. He truly understood the Word of God. And yet at the same time, Al was the kind of guy who was so common, so down to earth, and so uh, accessible. Al was the kind of guy that was, he could, he could uh, launch into a theological dissertation, but he was absolutely just as comfortable teaching a simple truth. Uh, the B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me. And it, it, that's how he felt. He truly based his life on the word of God. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Al stood on those simple truths. He grasped the deeper things, but he was fantastic at combining them and teaching them to our ABF. And if I could take you who do not attend our ABF, if I could take you into that ABF and start to introduce you, and if I were to say to the person you were being introduced to, this is uh, Joe or this is Brent, and uh, he worked with Al, I guarantee you their face would light up, you'd see an instant smile, and they would say, oh, you know, Al and Judith, aren't they great people? Aren't they wonderful people? We love them. Al's our teacher. He's a great teacher. Have you ever heard Al teach? He's fantastic. And the adjectives that would be used, all positive. I have never, ever heard one person be critical of Al Kober in his lifestyle, in his teaching, in his philosophy, theology, etc. Always positive comments. And I had the privilege of talking to several people in prime time about Al. And I said to them, how would you describe Al? And here's the list of words. Many of these words were repeated over and over. But they saw him as a man of conviction, a man who knew what he believed, believed it to the very core of his being, and not only believed it, but it directly affected the way he lived his life. It made a difference, a difference in the way he lived his life. Commitment came up again and again. Al was committed to worship. He loved to worship God. He loved to serve God. He loved to serve others. He was committed to Judith, 
committed to his kids, his family, his friends, and he truly was committed to certified beef. He would be delighted to talk to you about it at any time. I actually learned quite a bit about beef over the years I knew Al. Things I, I really didn't even know I was interested in until I listened to Al and, and then uh, realized, well, that is interesting. That, that is amazing. <laughs> he was committed. Whatever he, confidence. Oh, he exuded a confidence. There's no question about that. You felt he had confidence in himself. But you didn't have to listen to Al very long to realize that his confidence was in his heavenly father, was in his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was in the Holy Spirit of God, directly guiding, leading him as an individual. Al, we miss you. Your gain is our loss. You were dear to us, Al, and we loved you. Our ABF and his influence on it was incalculable. 